If you are considering quitting your cushy full-time job in order to pursue your own business, this video is for you. Hey friends, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is April Lynn and I'm a recovering banker turned indie hacker. On this channel, we go through the trials and tribulations, successes and strategies to starting an online business and growing your audience. Today, I'll be sharing a little bit about my background and detailing exactly why I decided to quit my job as a financial analyst to start my own business. My hope is that by sharing this with all of you, you'll be able to make a more informed decision when it comes to considering whether or not to quit your own job. Let's get to it. It. So coming into college, I knew that I really wanted to help people. And I thought that the best place for me to do that would be Cornell University's School of Hotel Administration, one of the best hospitality programs in the world. But after working in hotels and restaurants, I realized that hospitality operations was not really for me. And I noticed that at that time, a lot of my peers were going into real estate, consulting, banking, and finance. And at that time, you know, banks were really trendy. They were socially accepted. They paid well, they had great benefits. And I was able to convince myself that financial analysis was something that I truly enjoyed. So I was able to get an internship at Citigroup, which then fed into their full-time program as financial analyst. So I graduated early, which as a result gave me a lot of time to burn before starting my full-time role. I'll skip some of this, but basically I started a side project called Tenderfoot, which was a platform to connect students with internships at startups. And I started Tenderfoot in March, and then my full-time role as financial analyst started in April. So for a while, I was concurrently working at my job at City while working with Tenderfoot on the side. And then Tenderfoot started getting more and more traction. I noticed that people from around the world were reaching out to me, interested about Tenderfoot and asking when we were going to launch. And I started noticing that Tenderfoot was taking up all of my headspace. I was thinking about Tenderfoot in the shower. I was thinking about Tenderfoot before going to bed at night. I started zoning out at meetings at work to think about Tenderfoot. Slowly, I actually started sneaking in Tenderfoot during my job, during my workday, because I had a remote position, so I wasn't really closely managed. So in between assignments and meetings, I would work on Tenderfoot. And I thought, you know, no big deal. As long as I'm getting my work done, no harm, no foul. But after a few months, it became apparent to me that Tenderfoot didn't want to be a side project. It wanted to be a full-fledged startup. And actually, as I was on a flight from Dallas to my home in Denver, I was listening to episode 86 of Cortland Allen's Indie Hackers podcast with Lynn Tai. And as I was listening to Lynn talk about her decision to quit her job to pursue her passions, that's really when I started first considering that maybe I should do the same. There were four main factors in my decision to quit, and these were passion, skill set, support, and financials. So first, let's talk about passions. Coming into school, again, I knew that I wanted to help people. I knew that I wanted to create value in some sort of way, and I simply wasn't interested in finance. And it wasn't just the team that I was on. So I interviewed lots of other teams within the realm of finance, but no matter how hard I tried, I really couldn't get interested in any of their job functions. And in a very stark contrast, I was absolutely energized to work on Tenderfoot whenever I could. It was clear to me that I was not passionate about finance. So now when it comes to skill set, I believe that everyone has a superpower. And this superpower is a unique combination of skills that you are exceptionally good at. And when I was taking tally of my own skills, what really I felt set me apart were my writing, my creativity, my visual art and design skills, as well as empathy. This was my superpower. This was the unique combination of skills that separated me from anybody else. And this superpower did not align with finance. And they say that you should focus on your strengths in your career and your weaknesses in your relationships. While I was good at Excel, numbers, creating financial projections, etc., those were not my superpowers, right? Those were not the skills that made me unique. Those were not the skills that set me apart from anybody else. What I noticed was that my superpowers were not being leveraged. And this meant that I was in a position where I was not reaching my full potential, which meant that I was not able to create the most value or help the most people as I was possibly able to do. 
Now moving on to support. Coming from a semi-Asian background, you know, I was always an overachiever and it was deeply important to me to secure the support of my parents before feeling really good about this decision. I knew how hard my parents both worked to get me into this school, to set me up for a good job in my future, and I knew that they both felt like my role as a financial analyst was very safe, secure, and lucrative. When I first told them that I wanted to quit my job as a financial analyst to start my own business, they were concerned. Of course they were. They wanted me to be successful and safe. But they also wanted me to reach my full potential. And once I explained to them that I felt like my skills were being underutilized and that I actually felt stifled in the position that I was in, they eventually came to terms and understood why that role was not a good fit for me. And to me, this support from them, that was huge. All right, let's talk about finances. No matter how much you want to leave your job, if you cannot afford to live without your income, you simply can't do it. When I was considering what sort of financial position I would be in if I left, I was considering how much money I had at the time, as well as how much money could sustain me through a full year of being able to work for myself without having to join another company. At that point, I had around $30,000 separated between my checking accounts, saving accounts, and investments in stocks and crypto. However, because I left my position less than a year after joining, I would have to return a $10,000 relocation bonus back to city. This would leave me with around $20,000 left in the bank. In terms of expenses, I have a student loan payment of $157 per month, as well as various business and personal subscriptions of around $36 per month. And then there were some other expenses such as gas, which totaled to around $57 per month. So then if I budgeted $300 a month for food and $900 a month for rent, that would come out to total $1,450 per month, which comes out to around $17,400 in a year. Keep in mind that I had $20,000 saved and nothing besides that, so that was cutting it pretty close. But I was resolved to live that life and see what I can do, right? I wanted to take the chance, I wanted to invest in myself. But then my parents came out and said that I would be able to live with them rent-free for the next year. That really strengthened my resolve to make that decision. It was an absolute gift. So then after considering everything from the standpoints of passion, skill sets, support, and financials, everything was pointing into the direction of quitting my job as a financial analyst to start my own business. Should you quit your job? I can't tell you how to live your life. All I can do is provide some insight into my own decision-making framework to hopefully lend some clarity into your own decision. What I can tell you is that when you look at deathbed regrets, very few people regret things that they did most everyone regrets something that they didn't do. And ultimately, life is too short to do something that you don't love. And if you're still thinking about whether or not to quit your job, stick around. I make lots and lots of videos detailing the ups and downs of living this life, and it may help you determine whether or not it is for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Truly, both of those things help a lot. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. And then if I budgeted $3,000, so after considering everything from the standpoints of skill set, pat, no. <laughs>